Hey guys, Justin here from Barbell Kings, and uh, today we're going to talk about diet. Um, I guess first things first, disclaimer. Uh, you know, each, each person's diet is going to be individual to them, and what works best for them is going to be, you know, it's it's going to vary person to person. Um, also, you know, consult your doctor before making any dietary changes for legal purposes. Um, that being said, uh, I think diet is one of the diet's one of the things that we we mess up. Uh, I think. A lot of people understand that like you have a basic understanding that you know eating healthy is good for you and you know you need to have a healthy diet um, I don't know if it goes as far as um, you know your your diet really is uh, like an integral part of your health um, as far as you know disease goes and uh, well-being um, I don't want it's not I wouldn't say it's more important than the other things but it's 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 a part that we we lack uh, severely in uh, American culture. Our diet is is a little uh, it leaves more to be desired. It's terrible. Um, so uh, that being said, uh, I guess let's go ahead and jump into uh, what we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to talk about three three major points: um, foods to avoid, uh, foods to eat, um, and then macros and. The, my my take on diet uh, is is m much more focused. Like I, I mentioned macros there, but macros are probably the least important thing. Um, the what I focus on is the micronutrients and gut bacteria. Uh, those are the the two things that I think are most important uh, to your diet. Like those those are the, the focus points, and you don't have to go uh, like like I I focus in and I make sure I get uh, like all my oops. All my all my vitamins, um, and I get nutrient pa blood work done. Is there a car back there? I can hear him. Oh yeah. So, uh, but I don't think uh, that's not necessary for most people. Um, like when I get to what foods to eat, you, you'll find that you know you can like three foods will cover like 95% of your your nutrient uh, needs, and that's. Uh, like that that's so much more important uh, than anything else like if you're like I, don't, I, I guess I need to find a way to word this um, like if you're deficient in a B vitamin uh, you know there's a whole host of range of side effects that that'll cause if you're deficient in any vitamin really vitamin D zinc uh, copper I mean all all of these these small micronutrients that we we typically overlook uh, play, play a huge role in our health and our cell function and you know our, our body's ability to function it's it goes much it goes even beyond what I think most people like uh, think about like um, there's a dr. Dale Bredson he has a great book called the end of Alzheimer's and he talks about how you know you know we're talking about uh, Alzheimer's is a neurological disorder but a lot of it he found in the gut like uh, in, in, in people's diets and in male uh, nutrition and uh, you know so I think that level of it goes beyond the scope of what most people realize um, is, and how important uh, eating healthy is to your body um, we're talking all, all kinds of disease um, SIBO uh, like irritable bowel syndrome like th those are all I guess those things would be like what you consider normal like I think that would be things that most people think about but you know depression anxiety mood disorders um, neurological disorders cognitive function uh, all those kind of things kind of I think slip through the cracks most people don't think that their diet plays such an important role in uh, in those diseases as well okay so all that being said uh, first things first foods to avoid uh, gluten so that's uh, wheat products all wheat products uh, any all wheat byproducts um, there's a whole list of, of problems that come with eating gluten and the thing is not everybody has a sensitivity to gluten like there's probably a good 40 percent of people that can eat gluten and not have any negative side effects but there's no nutritional benefit to eating gluten like there's no there's no vitamins there's no nutrients in bread you're not you're not getting anything from eating it so I always like to just that's just something I like to just flat out avoid if it's not giving me anything and there's a good chance that it's probably going to hurt me it's not worth eating um, next uh, refined refined sugars um, seed oils like your uh, like corn seed oil um, some other good ones um, I'm trying to think of other seed oils <laughs> um, black seed oil that's not a good example of one because that's not a common one soybean oil that one's common uh, 
but all those all those oils are real high in linoleic acid and they're highly oxidative so they they cause inflammation and stress on the body they're they they are harmful to eat and they're very high in calories and again there's no nutrients so you're not missing out on anything by getting rid of them um, lastly is the refined sugars that's what i was I was jumping the gun on. So high fructose corn syrup, added of sugars. Um, the human body is actually only made to consume like 18 grams of sugar in a day, which if you're conscious of reading your labels, that's, I mean, like you can get to 18 grams of sugar in almost like, in, I mean, super quick. That's like maybe like two sips of a pop. Like <laughs> there's, I mean, there, we load everything with sugar. So that's, uh, for, for those three things, uh, the biggest way to, the easiest way to do it, is just avoid anything that's processed. Anything that comes in a bag or a box, read your, you know, read the ingredients. And if it's, if it's processed, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it, you know. Most, most things that you, know, you should be eating are things like apples. You know, I'll, I'll get to what you should eat, but like, you know, whole foods, not, not processed garbage. Um, so I guess that being said, and there's a, on my website, I have a, I have a whole list of all the side effects of eating uh, all the foods that I told you to avoid. So that could be you know, helpful if you want to know what these foods are doing to your body. Uh, things to eat, or yeah, that's where we are. Things to eat. Um, so I want to start by saying that like grass-fed, cage-free eggs, um, wild-caught fish, uh, like the way that you know the, the way these food our food is supposed to be in nature um, actually has much higher nutrient contents like you're looking at like almost double the nutrients in some foods um, when they're raised um, in a there's a word that I want to use here that's not organic but if when they're raised you know how they're supposed to be if you know the you know like with the, the grass fed and the cage free stuff um, when uh, those animals for like their the egg yolks, I I, I took a picture the other day because you can see clear difference in egg yolks that are grass fed versus grain fed, and the yolks are so much darker and more nutrient dense uh, when they're grass fed and they're cage free. So eating food uh, in, in that manner, you know the way it's supposed to be, the way it came from nature, uh, that has a whole lot more nutrient benefits. And so the the other great thing about that is that um, a lot of these nutrients. Uh, work together with each other, so it's it's very hard to reach a uh, like a, def uh, a toxicity level of nutrients when you're eating it uh, through your diet versus supplementing it. So I guess that was just a, a good, nice tip there. Um, foods to eat: eggs, uh, wild uh, fresh freshwater fatty fish. So that'd be like salmon. Um, organ meats: uh, liver is my, my go-to. Liver. Like those three things right there, you can probably get 95% of like all your you know needed nutrients. Uh, like those are very nutrient dense foods. Those are super foods if you want to call them that. Like, and it's not even like you have to eat a lot of these things. Like two three ounces, two three ounce servings of liver, two three ounce servings of salmon a week, and you know two eggs a day. And like I said, right there is probably 95% of your daily value. You know all your nutrients are right there. And it's not like you have to eat it every day. You know, a couple times a week will we'll provide you with, with all you need. Um, after those things, um, bone broth. Uh, so I talked about gut health earlier a little bit. I mentioned it. Um, leaky gut is a big problem in our society. A lot of like a big part of that is actually from gluten. Um, but so restoring your gut health, restoring your gut liner, bone broth um, is is excellent for that. It's I mean you'll feel it. It's it's crazy. Just, uh, just just eating it and you know you'll you'll feel the the difference but it'll restore your gut lining it also has um so there's methionine and lithionine are proteins that come from uh, methionine comes from eating red meat and when these are this is like one of the beautiful things about nutrients maybe i'll talk about sometimes is you need balance so you like you need your omega-3 to your omega-6 ratio your lithionine to your methionine ratios uh zinc and copper um I think of some other ones, but like they, they all have these, they all have ratios. So uh, methionine, if you get real high on methionine and the low on uh, lithionine, it becomes uh, damaging to the body. Red meat isn't damaging to the body when that ratio is kept in check. So bone broth helps you, uh, gives you that ability to eat more red meat. So uh, bone broth uh, fixes the gut liner. Uh, fermented foods then feed the, the good bacteria in your stomach. There's a ridiculous amount of bacteria in your stomach, 
and they are absolutely essential for your health and well-being. <laughs> There's like more bacteria in your gut than there are stars in the sky, which no, obviously I don't know if that's true, but I'm just trying to give you an analogy here. There's a lot of bacteria. They're very important for you. Got a truck back there. Can you see him? Yeah. Ah. Nope, there's another truck. Man, I thought I walked in traffic. Pray for me. You're good, buddy. Sorry, I didn't see you. Alright. Can double check. <laughs> um, okay, so all those things. Um, so the, the, the fermented foods, um, cheese, butter, um, there's gotta be other yogurt, kefir. I guess that's the only thing I can come up with right now. Those are, I mean, those, that's pretty much, yogurt and kefir is pretty much my two go-tos because I like yogurt. Dairy is something, I guess I should slide this in real quick. Dairy could be part of your uh, void list if you're lactose intolerant. Obviously, like I said, everybody's diet is individual. Some people can tolerate dairy. It's uh, something that we've learned uh, ancestrally to be, keep producing the, the lactose proteins or their enzymes uh, after childbirth. Um, but I, I like dairy because it's got a whole lot of good nutrients in it. Um, okay, I guess I can go back to what I was talking about before. Fermented foods, um, organic fruits and vegetables. Um, side note on fruits and vegetables, um, the longer that they've been sitting in the store, the less nutrients they have. So I shop at a food co-op, for example. Not everybody needs to do this, but I just want to tell you guys. Um, so the longer, like, because those those the foods that get, like the veg, fruits and vegetables I get from the like the mar farmers market or the food co-op are usually much like super fresh. Like those are usually like picked within that week um, or a week before, so they still have a whole lot of the uh, the nutrients. There's a wonderful book called Eating Wild that I learned that from. Um, another thing with vegetables to get more vegetables have what are called phylates, which block uh, bioavailability of a lot of the nutrients that are in them. So uh, heating like potatoes, I'll use potatoes as a good example. This, this is not true for all vegetables, but uh, for potatoes, uh, like heating them and then cooling them or letting them cool before you eat them reduces a lot of the phylates. And you can actually do that process multiple times to help the bioavailability of like potassium is big in potatoes in the, in the skins uphill walk um, let's see I think that's all we need to talk about for now for foods to avoid foods to eat why you should eat them um, it's you'll I guess I should I mean I'll say I'm gonna say you'll you'll learn like you're gonna learn if I don't I don't know how you're gonna find this information um, like I eat when I eat spinach, I eat uh, avocado ranch with it, or lots of avocados with it, because the fats from the avocado help the bioavailability of the spinach, and all the, the folate and vitamin A, and vitamin K from the spinach. All right, um, that might be it for now. I might have to get into macros, macros on uh, part two, because we've been recording for like 15 minutes now. All right, take care guys. I'll be back for part two. Enjoy.